Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for the final session of our inaugural, really, Giving Tuesday Boot Camp. Oh, can everyone hear me all right? Candace, can you guys hear me all right? I yeah. unmuted you. Okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> we can hear you. Okay, great. It wasn't oh. showing up on my audio feed, so thank oh. you for that feedback. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you guys so much. I hope you guys had a great um, campaign, whether it was successful from a financial standpoint or your goals, or at least hope that there was some lessons learned that you can really take forward as part of your future fundraising campaigns. Um, here at Cosvox and with the Rockefeller Foundation, when we really put this program together, or this partnership together, our hope was that we wanted to not only help support you and your organization's efforts leading up to Giving Tuesday, but also really create an environment and an opportunity to uh, learn together. And so that's really what this session today is going to be designed to do, is really to kind of just recap where we've been, where we are today, and then also have uh, many of you, six organizations out of the eight, um, have said that they are willing to kind of share their insights and the lessons they've learned um, over the past few weeks and even just in their campaign last week. And so just a quick road roadmap, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time kind of sharing myself because I wanna dig into the insights. Um, and just so that everybody uh, knows what to prepare for, uh, Caitlin with New Yorkers for Parks, um, I'm gonna have you go first. Um, so just so you can get ready as I kind of brief uh, the session here. And so we're going to uh, talk a little bit about Giving Tuesday. It was the biggest Giving Tuesday um, ever. Uh, it continues to grow. Uh, and that just really showcases how this movement towards uh, creating a day where globally we're celebrating the idea of generosity and supporting organizations um, is catching on and continues to do so, not just with nonprofits, but businesses and other organizations. I think this year, again, though, gave us a lot of other insights into how the increased competition and kind of noise on Giving Tuesday really makes it difficult to stand out. And we actually sent out a survey to um, probably about a thousand organizations that we've engaged with previously um, as it relates to Giving Tuesday, asking for their feedback. And so we've started collecting those initial insights. But one of the things that we have noticed is that people are just kind of disappointed or kind of confused with whether there was tons of value there um, and will really be kind of like adjusting or rethinking their strategy. Uh, many smaller nonprofits that we connected with um, had leveraged uh, Facebook fundraising for their campaigns and were kind of disappointed because they were lured in by the kind of promise of a matching gift uh, with $7 million from PayPal and Facebook. However, uh, if you don't know, that actually was exhausted in a matter of seconds, according to Facebook. And so many organizations that were promoting that effort out to their donors um, felt as though uh, they were kind of misleading their donors even because none of those gifts were matched or they didn't receive any of those matching gifts. And so there's a lot of kind of questioning and insights alongside just the celebration of how big of a day it was. And so I don't know where your organization kind of falls on that spectrum, but we're excited to be able to kind of dig in and learn together today. Just a few housekeeping items. Um, I'm gonna try to uh, keep the feedback session kind of rolling. So if you um, are looking to share, or if you're one of those that are gonna be sharing, um, please try to keep your feedback and insights to kind of eight to 10 minutes. We're really trying to focus in on just these three simple questions, overall how'd it go, um, what did you learn? Was it successful? What are kind of the key ways that you're measuring this? Uh, the other thing was what went right, what didn't, and what were you missing? Or what, wish, what did you wish that you had had or known prior to the campaign? And then any learnings, one to two key learnings you'll apply next year, or more specifically in future fundraising campaigns. So we'll keep it to eight to 10 minutes each. Um, Caitlin from New Yorkers for Parks is gonna go first. Um, Sophia at the Feminist Press, uh, you'll be up after uh, Caitlin. And then Kristen at Community Solutions, you'll go next. And then we'll have three additional individuals um, at We Robotics, the Resolution Product Project, and Data Kind um, share following. And so, Caitlin, let me uh, unmute you here. Um, you should be able to share with our team now. So, Caitlin? 
Oh, okay. Um, can you hear me? Yep, perfect. Oh, okay, great. Um, well, Giving Tuesday, we were really happy to work with Causebox and the Rockefeller Foundation. Um, overall, it went really well for us. We exceeded our goal by about $200, but um, what we were really excited about this year was that we engaged um, around 50 donors, which is about 20 more than we did last year. So we were excited to have um, increased engagement with our campaign and with our donors. Um, and a, almost half of those donors were um, new. They were usually, mostly people who were familiar with our organization already, but um, either received bulbs from us from our Daffodil Project or attended our events, but had never given to us before. So we were really happy that um, the campaign worked um, to engage those people. Um, we think that the Causebox design helped a lot, as well as um, the different webinars that we participated in before the campaign itself, um, particularly the best practices and how to tweak our messaging to make it seem more like coming together rather than just giving to us. Um, we also think that this year we did a new thing and shared different advocate features on our Causebox website and also on our social media, which people seemed really interested in because it put a face to the work that we were doing. Um, so we think those helped a lot as well. Um, we also really liked being able to have the, our video um, right near the donation button, um, which we think helps get our message, uh, message across pretty succinctly. Um, and I know people are really interested in video these days, so we think that helped too. Um, I guess for things that could have gone better, we had a few board members who did give to the campaign and one board member who made his own um, fundraising page and shared it a lot with his network. Um, I think maybe next year we could work on getting a few more of them engaged. Some of them aren't very um, technologically savvy, so um, that might be a challenge, but some of them are. and. I think we could engage a few of them or a few um, other donors who are just really excited about our work. Um, I think I think that's kind of most of what I have to say. Yeah, Kayla, I appreciate those insights. And I think you had mentioned that you, you reached 20 more donors, even though you guys kind of um, hit your goal. But the big thing for you guys was reaching new donors. So as you think yeah. post Tuesday, um, any other lessons on you know how you can cultivate those donors even further or any other things that you guys have already been thinking about on how you're leveraging this campaign, but also to begin building longer term relationships with those individuals? Yeah, sure. Um, I, well, we're adding them to our newsletter list so that they can um, if they weren't already on it so that they can stay up to date on um, sort of just what's going on and everything. And we also sent just a thank, I know their tax acknowledgement emails went out through Causebox, but we also just sent everybody who donated a thank you email also with an invitation to one of our events that's coming up in January. So we hope that some of them might be interested and might attend and become more engaged with us that way. Excellent. Well, I know one of the unique things that you had about your campaign as well is you guys launched your campaign, I think it was 10 days before Giving Tuesday or two weeks. Is that right? Yeah, we did. Um, last year, we had launched it around the same time frame and some people um, donated early and some people don't. A lot of our donors are older and don't necessarily go online all that much. So we wanted to make sure people didn't have to remember to come back on Giving Tuesday to donate. But actually most of our donations ended up coming through either the day before or on Giving Tuesday. But we did have a few earlier. Excellent. And as you think about next year, anything you'll be changing or adding except for you had already mentioned kind of trying to activate more advocates to do peer to peer. Anything else? Yeah, um, I think we'll try to get um, a board member again to give us a matching gift because I think that helped 
helped as well inspire people to give within the time limit. Um, I think, yeah, I think maybe we'll do, try to do something a little different maybe with the advocate features, but they were pretty popular. So maybe something in that line, but change it up a little. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you sharing and kind of giving some of those insights. And um, for everyone else listening, we're, we're also going to be recording this. So I'll send it out to you um, so that you can have it, but then also we'll be sharing it with the Rockefeller Foundation um, so that they can kind of piece this together in addition to your submitted report. So thanks so much, Caitlin. Thank you. Um, we don't have a ton of time for questions today, but if you do have any questions specifically for Caitlin um, or any, any of the people that shared today about something they did or something they mentioned, feel free to drop that in the uh, Zoom group chat and we'll try to get to those, as many of those as we can and if not, maybe follow up afterwards. Again, the goal is to kind of promote learning. So thanks so much, Caitlin. Thank you. So the next organization that's going to share is the Feminist Press. And so, Sophia, let me set you up here. Sophia, you should be able to share. Oh, uh, yeah. Now. Can you hear me? Yep, perfect. Great. Um, yeah, so I'll just give a little overview. I, uh, it's already interesting to hear that I have some of the things, this, the same things to say as um, the person who just spoke. Um, so I would, we, our Giving Tuesday was a success in some ways and we didn't meet our goals in other ways. So um, it's only the second time that we've, that our organization has done this. Um, so perhaps I set our financial goal a little bit too high. We ended up making almost exactly the same amount as we made last year. So um, that's sort of an interesting with like giving more resources and more time to the campaign, we ended up with uh, just about the same amount of money. Hmm. However, what's, what was really successful, um, I think was the, so my main, my, besides the financial goal, my goals for this campaign were, were to initiate a peer to peer fundraising campaign and use that to reach some new donors and a sort of a different pool of donors from the people who usually give to us um, at the end of the year. And that ended up being um, really successful. So we, let's see, we had seven, seven people doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, we had uh, eight other people doing dedicated social media support who aren't part of our organization. Um, and we ended up with 36 donations total, and most of them were from first-time donors. So that's really great. So we're definitely reaching a, like a different pool of people. And do those um, mostly come through the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers or direct? Yeah, they did. So um, yeah, I had a few different target audiences the, from which I was soliciting peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And um, basically, so we're a book publisher, so we have author, you know, we publish books of authors um, and the authors were like really receptive about becoming peer to peer fundraisers, uh, which is great. So we got a new, you know, sort of a new, like the networks of friends and family of our authors were donating to this campaign, which is fantastic. Um, just like the person before me said, I would have liked to have more support from our board. Um, they wouldn't, I, I really wanted them to get on board with the peer to peer fundraising and they weren't quite up for it this time. Um, and we also didn't get any, I, I was trying to recruit peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers from like some of our top donors. And that didn't really, didn't really, no one was biting at that either. But our authors are really into it. So that was an interesting um, takeaway. Um, let's see. What went right? I, I think like, yeah, I was really happy to have, I mean, the organization and like the resources that were available to us through this program were really fantastic. And I think like a definite takeaway is that like planning early, having a strategy, like having good organization is really key to pulling this off. Um, the messaging, like the, the messaging that we, uh, you know, learned about together through this, through these webinars, I think was also really helpful. This emphasis on collective generosity rather than 
give to us. I think that was really helpful and it really shaped um, the kinds of messages that we were sending out. Um, and then what another like, just like a, an observation about what, what I felt like I was missing or what I would appreciate having to support this, um, this campaign more is just more organizational support from my, you know, from my organization. And that's just so hard because we have a really small staff. Um, and we also, like Giving Tuesday is a really overwhelming day, right? Like I got so many Giving Tuesday emails um, yeah. from, from groups that were trying to get money from me. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, no, that's, that's my airspace. <laughs> Stop. Um, so it's hard to, I think, hit that line for your particular audience about how much is the right amount and how much is too much. Um, nobody wants to like feel like they're being hit over the head um, with, at, with requests for money. So in terms of like my, my organization, like we, we have a lot of different things that we want to say to our supporters and we don't want all of them to be fundraising asks. So just like striking that balance, I think is something that I was really working on this time and will continue to work on for, for future campaigns. Um, yeah, I think that's, that was basically what I wanted to share. Um, I don't think I left anything out here. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for sharing. And I, and I just had a few follow-up questions on some of the things sure. you said. But before I did that, I, I loved this. Oh my gosh, this. that's totally it. Yeah. That came out. Um, so whiny donor on Twitter just posts things that like donors would say, but they posted this photo of like, <laughs> what happened on Giving Tuesday. And I think it was like the perfect summary because I think I had like 50 some Giving Tuesday emails in my inbox before like 8 a.m. Uh, or 10 a.m. or something like that. So I totally understand that. And I think that's some of the things that we're even, tr even as an organization that supports nonprofits with Giving Tuesday campaigns is like, yes. how, like what is the real opportunity um, and what makes a successful campaign mm -hmm. um, and kind of what are the different angles there? And you even mentioned some like, you know, peer to peer with your authors, like even though that wasn't kind of like even just that was successful. And so how do you even choose where to invest your efforts to make mm -hmm. the most, or to get the most value out of it. And so just as a follow-up question, you, you mentioned obviously peer-to-peer, -peer, um, and then you mentioned that your donors and board really didn't get on, or like, it didn't really stick with them. Mm -hmm. um, did, have you kind of indicated any, what the friction was with your board or with your donors? Was there anything that stood out was, and how are you asking them to get involved, I guess? Yeah, I, so it was, in both, uh, it was sending email requests, like, you know, tailored personal email requests to a small section of our, our donor list and then uh, emails to our board members. And it was just the, it just like, no one responded. <laughs> so that was, um, whereas when I, when I reached out to our authors, I got lots of responses. So yeah, there's definitely something that I can learn from that, I think. Um, and there's probably more effective ways that I can reach those other populations to get them more excited about it. Yeah. And I think it's funny too, because you, you mentioned you were overwhelmed, let alone like donors are overwhelmed. And I think this plays into year end fundraising as well, yeah. where the average person gets like six to 10 requests multiple times from different nonprofits mm. that they support. Um, whether it's through mail or email or kind of a combination of advertising and like whatever kind of like just being swarmed. So again, like, how does your organization stand out? And that's something we're thinking about. So even hearing you guys, and maybe even some of the struggles that you had or learnings is helpful for us to know how we can help mm -hmm. too. So appreciate kind of the vulnerability and sharing where, you know, yeah. maybe even it fell short. Yeah, but I do think that like the webinars that you provided and the resources were super, super, super helpful. So I want to thank you for that. Yeah, I appreciate that, that, that kindness. <laughs> um, that's, that's our intent, so I appreciate that. Uh, are there other ways that you guys are going to be leveraging peer-to-peer -peer throughout the year? I know you said you were just kind of testing it or like leaning into the waters. Any ways that you've indicated for 2019? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I would, I would like to have another go at it. Uh, perhaps in a, yeah, I think I, there's, there's, uh, sorry, I'm like thinking out loud um, or not out loud. Um, the question of like, 
what's what ends up being more effective when you band together with like everyone you know all the other nonprofits in the world trying to raise money on a single day or like maybe next it, there'll be some point next year we'll where we'll have some day that's like specific to our organization and try to rally around that and make that a giving day just for our community so yeah i would definitely um try it again for giving tuesday and also for uh, another campaign earlier in the year yeah that's very interesting we've seen a lot of nonprofits kind of take that approach they don't not participate in giving tuesday right they kind of create either like another giving week around something that's uniquely kind of specific for their organization whether it's another day of the year that kind of has significance for their cause or they just create something you know and they say you know the first week of september we're going to do blank blank and blank and every year create that momentum so i think there's a lot of value there as well okay well right. sophia thanks, thanks for sharing uh, if you have any questions for Sophia or kind of follow-up feedback, feel free to drop that in the Zoom group chat. Uh, Kristen from Community Solutions, um, I've set you up so you should be able to chat in or even share share anything that you would like to share. Um, just for reference, Joyce from We Robotics is going to go next, and then Tom at the Resolution Project, and then Quinton or someone on Quinton's team uh, from Datakind will go last. So, Kristen? Great. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen. I work for Community Solutions. We're a nonprofit dedicated to ending homelessness and the conditions that create it. And we're based in New York, but we partner with more than 70 communities across the country to end veteran and chronic homelessness. And we had a really great Giving Tuesday experience. Uh, we smashed our financial goals. We raised more than seven times our goal amount, in part because we set such a modest goal. And we were conservative for a couple of reasons. Um, first, we were fresh off the heels of an underwhelming Veterans Day campaign where it seemed like we were doing all the things. We were doing an email campaign, organic and paid social posts, and just didn't raise a lot of money. We got lots of great engagement, but um, it wasn't a very successful fundraising effort. So um, the other factor in setting that goal was we had kind of dabbled in Giving Tuesday before where we would send an email or two, but it was a very limited effort. So we really just weren't sure um, how much to expect and whether our donors would be receptive to this kind of um, push in large part because our donors tend to um, give more offline. So this was kind of an experiment for us. So we were wanting to use this to launch our big end of year appeal and hopefully go into that campaign with momentum. Um, we were hoping to lock in donations from existing donors and then also hopefully pick up some new donors along the way. So um, as I mentioned, we were very successful. We actually exceeded our initial goal before Giving Tuesday started, thanks to our Save the Date email campaign. So we just kept bumping that goal up as donations came in and ultimately landed on $7,000 as the final amount and exceeded that, um, raising $7,695 um, throughout the campaign. So what went right? Um, I think we got the basics down and the boot camp was super helpful in just having a sense of like, oh, here are the things that need to be on our radar and making it feel um, like something we could accomplish with a small staff. So um, we did save the dates, emails the day before, the morning of Giving Tuesday, the evening, late night, and then a thank you recap, and then corresponding posts across all of our social media channels. Uh, we also did a little bit of paid social targeting key markets with Facebook ads that had different creative highlighting successes of different cities. Um, mm. What didn't go right, uh, tracking. <laughs> This was a big one. We had problems with our Facebook pixel that we weren't able to fix in time. So as a result, like I can kind of infer where donors are coming from, but it's taking a lot of legwork. Like I'm having to look up, is this an existing donor? Did they get the email campaign? Which email from the campaign did they click on to kind of um, uh, go back in and find out what led them to donate? And then if I rule all those options out, then I'm inclined to think that they came from one of our social campaigns. But again, that's just a guess and it should not be a guess. Yeah. Um, 
in terms of stuff that we were missing, I wish that I had planned like a midday lunchtime email because I was pretty shocked to realize like sending an email out to our list of supporters worked. Like every time I sent one out, donations would come in. So I think having a little midday check-in might have been helpful. Um, I think I could have done a better job updating progress on social so that our supporters there felt um, more with it and getting more of the content that our email list was getting. Um, the other thing that we didn't do this time that I think could be interesting for um, future years would be to tap into that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, that's something that we just didn't try to attempt for this campaign, but I think that could be useful. And I also wish I would have engaged the staff earlier. Um, most of our company works remotely, so I did send out an email saying, hey, please share this with your network, but it's not like I'm in an office where I can just nudge people. <laughs> so I think if I had sent out um, messages leading up to Giving Tuesday to our staff to say, hey, we're doing this big push, have it on your radar so that on the actual day when I send out materials to encourage people to post it, they'll just be a little bit more prepared and aware. Um, key learnings for next year, definitely wanting to start earlier. Um, that would just make everything feel a bit more organized, uh, less last minute, implementing better tracking so that we know where our donations are coming from. I think adding a match would do a lot to create urgency and give donors kind of a why donate now, especially for those supporters who are likely to give to an end of year campaign, but might not give to um, Giving Tuesday. And then I think the biggest thing that is not just for this campaign, but really for all communications with our donors, um, making sure that we create a steady stream of content throughout the year so that our mailing list is used to receiving regular emails from us so that they're less likely to be caught by spam filters and also just so they're more invested in our work and our progress. Um, I think that ultimately is what makes the biggest difference when we're sending out these fundraiser messages. Well, Kristen, thanks for sharing that like extensive overview of your guys' campaign and giving kind of a snapshot into to what worked and what didn't. And congratulations on obviously uh, crushing your goal. That's that's incredible to hear. And I think you're right. Like just getting the basics right and doing those things well really does work. And I'm I'm thankful to even hear you echo some of the things that we've heard from our customers over the past few years. Is that email is like the key to success in Giving Tuesday. And the more emails you send on Giving Tuesday that are clear and concise and still differentiate, you still have to do all those things. But the more emails you send, the more money people end up raising. And so I think it's interesting that you kind of um, saw that as well. Yeah, that was very surprising and gratifying. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very different than like the social media posts. And that's what we hear a lot is, and we've, we had a bunch of customers just like crush it on Giving Tuesday this year, but a bunch that didn't. And the key difference we've seen is that dependence on social um, as kind of the key channel for communication, those campaigns tend to not do as well. Um, and so mm -hmm. it's always interesting to see where, you know, multi-channel, clear message, but, you know, not heavily relying on social ends up driving the most, unless you already are deeply invested in social. And I think that's, that's kind of the message we always share uh, with nonprofits. Um, but I think your last point is huge. And I think just as far as like a key learning to take out of this, and you kind of reminded me of this, is how do you make sure that you're regularly communicating with your supporters um, outside of giving opportunities? Because I did receive like a bunch of emails from nonprofits that I haven't, like I don't even know how they had my email address, let alone like when the last time I engaged with them or they sent me any updates. And so kind of just showing up out of nowhere and asking for money, um, is, is not necessarily the best way to steward relationships well. And I think creating more micro touch points um, throughout a year is gonna be really effective um, for driving results across your fundraising efforts, not just on Giving Tuesday. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, Kristen, any, any other things there? No, I think um, those were the highlights. Great, well, I appreciate you sharing and I'm glad to hear about community solutions success. Um, 
Joyce from We Robotics. Yeah, hi. Hey, Joyce, how are you? I'm good, thank you, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, so how, how did things go? Well, can I share my screen, do you mind? Uh, sure, yeah, you just go ahead and press the share button and then uh, it'll ask you, it'll give you like a prompt and then you should be able to press okay. Oh, okay, terrific. Well, I'll, I'll get started here because I know that we're, um, we're busy on time. So uh, I'm gonna be the uh, perfect example of how social media is, uh, oh, it says I can't share my screen while another participant is sharing. Okay, let me go ahead and stop sharing. Can, you should be able to share now. Okay, great, thanks so much. Um, okay, let's hope I do the right screen because I work off of like four screens. <laughs> Okay, so uh, again, we're the perfect example of a group that what you talked about uh, of being social media heavy and how it is not um, that successful for us. So we, um, oh, let me see, if, let me tell me if you can see my screen because it's not letting me. Yeah, I can see it says We Robotics Giving Tuesday right up. Perfect, okay. So um, first let me, let me explain a little bit better about what We Robotics does because we're, we're unique in this group and the fact that we're so global that I think it hurt us. Um, we Robotics relies almost solely on corporate uh, and foundation and government and you know big grants and organizations that um, are giving to us for certain projects and then also uh, some consulting contracts. So we've never done individual uh, donation campaigns before. So Given Tuesday for us was 100% brand new. And um, so for us, like what we do is we are I'll just show you that we use robotics and we go into all of these different uh, developing nations. And um, what we do is we provide for them the technology and the training and um, all of our expertise so that those who live in that uh, country can then use what we provide for them to solve their own local problems. So we definitely don't wanna be the group that goes in, saves the day and leaves we actually set it up so that they can solve their own problems. So being so global um, and being so heavy on large donations, I'm not sure that we handled this correctly. So I'm just gonna scroll down here so you can see. What we do is we have these flying labs in Africa, America, Asia, and then out in the um, Pacific, like Fiji and Tonga. And so we use these robotics to be able to help them and these large organizations, including Rockefeller, um, supporting us is where we get large grants. So we had this amount, this lofty goal of 100,000, and that just may seem crazy, but that's actually a normal amount for us or actually a little bit low when it comes to these big organizations. And again, we've never done like individual. But we are very good at our communication. So we sent out uh, during the day a lot of social media posts because that's what we normally do and that's where our, our main audience is. We did not do an email campaign. Um, and you can see what we decided for our goal, because all of our projects are already funded, what we do need though is to be able to train all, all these local individuals to be able to do not only as drone pilots, but to um, be able to do the analytics, um, all of the different ways that they can use the data for actionable purposes. So that's what we chose as our need. Looking back now, I don't think that was tangible enough for people to be able to say, you know, looking at like your the bicycle campaign you guys used as an example, mm -hmm. one bike is exactly this amount. If you gave this amount, you donated one bike. It doesn't have the same um, feel of, I donated this one thing, and that makes sense to me. So we did a lot of um, reaching out. Uh, we even uh, retweeted Rockefeller and everything. But see, these are our, our sponsors and everything. But you can see, this is how many posts that we did. Now, Viviana did a big, um, 
uh, analytics on this. For each of our flying labs, we sent out 16 social media posts just for the Tanzania flying lab, and three for the Pacific, and three for Peru, and one for Uganda, and four for Cameroon, and three for India. Like we sent out, because what we wanted to do is to put stories with this kind of um, large scale projects that we do. We wanted to make it really human to them and to talk about uh, what each one of them did. So. Some of our posts were specifically for Giving Day, and then we tried to pepper in there stories that would make them to understand. So in the end, like here are some examples of one of our of one of our Twitter posts because it talks about the women who we are we're trying to really lift up women in the robotics field in the whole STEM field. And then we also had one that specifically was a, a gentleman in Cameroon. He's one of our engineers and just the story of him getting up to this. So again, we tried to, to do that angle. And then, um, so here, this one peppered in between. This one has nothing to do with Giving Day, but it talks about um, our Tanzania lab and the video that can go with that. And then we had a lot of our like this is our gentleman who um, runs our Tanzania lab, we asked each of them to send out uh, social media posts with their own language and everything to be able to get this even farther. So in the end, it was, I, I only had just the giving day type of posts on there, but between all of our blogs and everything, we had um, 22 social media posts just about giving day um, but we had, um, oh my gosh, it was an incredible amount. For, uh, for LinkedIn, we were able to increase. We had 25 posts on LinkedIn. On Facebook, we had 26 posts. On Twitter, um, we had even more and we increased. In the end, what we learned was that we had more realistic posts than we've had in the past. It really increased the way that we posted and how we spoke to our audience. And we were so grateful to learn how to do that better as an organization. But then here's our, here's our, our rub. I'm going back between two different ones here. So we did monitor for 24 hours because I'm on the Pacific coast and, and uh, Viviana is in central Europe. So we were able to monitor this the whole time. Um, we didn't do the peer-to-peer -peer. we didn't do the big emails part of that is because um, we're kind of a planning early group so for this in order to reach out we really wanted a couple of months ahead of time to get that whole template ready to um, to speak with our board of directors beforehand to get them ready so we didn't really feel like we were giving them enough time um, a lot of our board are you know some pretty cool muckety mucks up in uh, Silicon Valley and um, really cool dude with data kind and some of those. So we didn't want to give them, you know, along with their end of the year stress, more stuff to do. And we felt like we, we should have given them more time. So we will definitely start that better. And then the other thing is um, a lot of our donors, we have a lot in, in Europe. GDPR says that we cannot send out an email unless they have given permission ahead of time so that today we just launched our brand new newsletter to let people sign up and it asked them if we could send them emails in the future so we're learning from this so that we can do a much better email campaign next time so you want to know how we did you guys get ready to just all laugh we send out a hundred thousand dollars we got a hundred and seventy five a hundred of that was me. I did the first hundred dollars because I wanted to test it and make sure that everything went through. So we literally got one donor at 75. So it was, it was an amazing experience for us to learn, but it wasn't, it wasn't the financial, you know, big exciting thing for us. Yeah. But again, we learned that social media is not the only way to do this and we need to plan it early and we need to really reach out to our board and to do the email campaign. How's that? <laughs> no, I appreciate you sharing and being vulnerable and kind of uh, even highlighting ways that even though it was unsuccessful from a financial standpoint, there was still clear ways that you and your organization learned 
for the future. And I think that's yeah. what we would hoped. We'd hoped that that accompanied success in of its own right, but the learning is really probably the most valuable thing to take out of this anyways. And so I appreciate you kind of being vulnerable and sharing that. Um, I think the other thing I would comment on is I think it's also a case, again, that there's a, I guess, promoted standard playbook or operating kind of, uh, like, here's what you should do on Giving Tuesday. But the vast diversity of different types of organizations and different ways that they're funded and different relationships and contexts with their supporters and their networks and, you know, even location wise, just showcases that a single playbook doesn't work. Um, and I think that's also in something that we need to learn is how do we encourage and kind of showcase different ways to approach Giving Tuesday or a day like this. Um, and so that, that's been helpful for us to learn as we've kind of watched what you guys did and kind of learned from this as well. Um, is there any, oh, go ahead. I just think we went into it knowing that we didn't know how to do this well and that we'd come out of it. So when we, when we considered what our success metrics were going to be, we knew that it was going to be the learning aspect more than the money aspect. Absolutely. Yeah. And but so, you guys were great. So thank you. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And so you had mentioned that you, you didn't, you, you hadn't already developed a culture of individuals giving, obviously, you know, no. there's larger donations, more major funded foundations funded. Um, and I think that's something too to be thinking about is like, how can your organization play um, into something like this, but it doesn't necessarily need to be in the same way everyone else is doing, which is maybe asking for donations. I, I know I saw a few organizations just say like, hey, this is a day to promote generosity. And so they were just taking it as like a day to thank people for supporting mm -hmm. their efforts and encouraging others to go out and do community projects in their own cities, even if they were a global nonprofit. Um, and just kind of taking the angle of leaning into the dialogue or kind of the, the theme of Giving Tuesday, but not necessarily with the typical expectation of now I'm going to ask you to support our organization. And so I thought that was an interesting shift that I haven't seen as much of in previous years. Um, so just for everyone participating, it's not, all the campaigns don't need to be structured in the same way. And so thinking about how you can tap into it that's best aligned with your audience is, is essential. So, but thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, let me go ahead and mute you. But uh, Tom Dow from the Resolution Project, are you with us? I'm not seeing... Can you hear? Oh, hey, Tom, how are you? Okay, sorry. We're sort of trying to figure out the technology piece, which will serve as a really great preamble to the presentation that we're about to make. Um, so we can, we can hear you, though, so that's the essential part. So thanks for that's joining. That's a great place to start. Um, so, uh, yeah, Mackenzie, uh, my colleague, is going to try to get uh, some of our information up. We uh, had similar... Um, experiences to some of what we've heard today on the call. Um, Giving Tuesday is uh, definitely an interesting time for fundraisers. I spoke with a lot of my colleagues in the space in New York City, uh, largely and, and across the country, and, and they all um, sort of share this uh, humorous kind of, we were, we were sending back and forth a lot of Hunger Games gifs um, for the day. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, it can sometimes have that kind of like um, Thunderdome kind of feeling to it, um, where everyone is sort of trying to um, shout the loudest uh, or, you know, see what piece of the, the pie that they can get the day after people have spent whatever they haven't spent on um, Black Friday. Um, so on Cyber Monday, then the very next day asking people to reach into their pockets and pull out the pocket lint that they have left and maybe give it to us. Um, but that's my humorous pitch. Um, we did, uh, uh, we had a very um, interesting set of circumstances, I think, in particular, because we were the winners of the Interstellar Prize, uh, which provided us with some outside resources for, um, you know, some of the graphic design elements uh, for, like, setting up social pages, uh, and also from another organization that does the back end sort of analytics as well. So um, the notion that was presented to us as part of this particular, um, you know, win was that they were offering up what would be, uh, you know, the equivalent of $100,000 in in-kind services. Um, 
in those two areas to try to help us get through, uh, have a successful Giving Tuesday and then through the end of the year campaign. Um, <clears throat> we can say fairly clearly, I think at this point, that um, it did not work out quite that well. Um, there was uh, a lot of, there were a lot of moving parts. There was, I think that we ran into the too many hands in the pot um, kind of conundrum um, because the Giving Tuesday portion of it was largely pushed through Facebook because I think that as many people on the call have said, we were sort of lulled into what, you know, some may say is a bad faith effort on Facebook's part to, um, you know, to get people to, to, to do this with the understanding that, you know, $7 million is going to go away in a blip. Um, so we, we had, you know, board members and some other folks trying to reach out to some of their networks. Um, but it also created sort of a split. If you can see our screen at this point, um, that we had the organization's giving page, um, where we had set a $10,000, uh, amount to try to raise. And that wound up with $1,300 out of that. Um, and then we had, uh, you know, someone from the organization start his own giving page uh, sort of in tandem. And he fared better because it was more of a peer-to-peer -peer effort. So as we've heard some other folks on the call say, that peer-to-peer -peer is, is uh, oftentimes a little bit more um, uh, better leveraged, I guess, on a day when everyone is receiving entirely too many emails asking for money all at the same time. Um, that being said, uh, a, hmm? yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. So I just wanted to, we've got other resources and stuff that we want to share too. Mackenzie was just making sure that I didn't leave them out. Um, but one thing that I wanted to highlight here was that uh, a decent portion of this amount of the third, the $3,900 that George raised out of his $5,000 individual goal that he was trying to raise came from the leadership of the organization that was trying to leverage that early money for a Facebook match. They were trying to get a couple thousand dollars matched. Um, and we didn't find out until you know, later on that, that the money had already gone before they had made their donations, even though they knew about it and made their donations at like eight o'clock, 8.04 in the morning, or that just didn't wind up panning out for us. Um, so we wound up in a situation where our totals wound up being kind of fragmented because we had two different giving initiatives on Facebook um, with the best of intentions, but we also had what Interstellar was helping us build. And certainly to your point in the trainings, we wanted to make sure that we had a specific campaign, we had a specific landing page for, um, for Giving Tuesday, and we did have that. The Classy uh, platform was part of the donation through the Interstellar Prize. What you see up there now is, uh, has been changed to reflect our year-end goal, which is $100,000. Um, one of the great things that I think came out of this experience for us um, not only sort of understanding the effect of some of that fragmentation across different platforms um, is that it gave us a really good opportunity to stop and really intentionally think about the messaging and the stories that we wanted to tell with the understanding that we would be competing with a lot of other really good stories out there. Um, so I think in-house that is going to serve as a value add to us. It also really worked to open up a number of conversations with board members and leadership uh, around year-end giving, and we've been able to raise um, a, a match stack uh, among board members and senior uh, leadership um, in our giving community. And so now we've got a much stronger um, position to start doing some some closing of year-end gifts with the understanding that about 75000 to to 100000 of that will be matched by board members. Um, so that's all been really helpful, I think, uh, if we're sort of finding our silver linings and lessons learned from this experience. Um, is there anything that I'm leaving out, team? Um, we did have some uh, budget put aside for uh, the interstellar efforts to buy some Facebook ads and things like that. We gave them some of the, um, you know, the, the metadata about our donors to try to target very specific um, like clone populations, people who would be very similar audiences to receive sp like specific Facebook um, ads. 
lookalike audiences. I, I'm being told that that's what uh, the kids are calling it these days. Um, <laughs> so, um, hey, I'm a frontline fundraiser. I very quickly lose touch with things uh, in popular culture. Um, that makes sense. So the, those are um, the, those are things that we're still sort of waiting to see um, results from. I think that we're going to have to wait until the end of the year to really see how we do with the campaign um, for a match, but um, we'll keep our fingers crossed that those dollars were well invested at least because um, we didn't see it on the Giving Tuesday effort. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for sharing. And I think it's interesting to see, you know, you guys even had a different approach. Um, and I don't know if anyone else on the call had done fundraising on Facebook specifically and like hosting their campaigns on Facebook. Um, but I think it's interesting to kind of see that side of it. And we heard multiple stories from even customers of ours that chose not to use Cosvox for their Giving Tuesday, but then because they were lured in by the Facebook match, um, and then come away very disappointed in the same way you mentioned where they had people that were ready to give huge amounts of money at the beginning and that you know didn't necessarily pan out uh, as expected. And so that fragmentation kind of is frustrating for a lot of people. So it'd be interesting how that then evolves into future year strategies. So I, I, I'm grateful for that example here and kind of seeing that firsthand. I will just add, Noah, uh, this is Mackenzie speaking, that we participated in the Facebook uh, Giving Tuesday match last year as well and had uh, much greater success. I think we had a few thousand dollars matched. Um, I think they had about four million matched last year, but yeah. I think fewer nonprofits knew about it and so we were able to capitalize on those matching gifts. Um, and so we were fully focused on Facebook last year. We had like a a uh, Facebook Live video and some peer-to-peer -peer things as well. And it, it worked much better for us last year. So when we decided to do it this year, we weren't going, um, you know, just kind of shooting blind. Yeah. We did have a previous successful experience, but we didn't realize how much the the publicity had grown around that Facebook match this right. year. Yeah. And we had seen the dollar amount increase, so we figured that, you know, if it was sort of, you know, commensurate with the growth, then maybe we'd do a little bit better, but I mean, we did have, we had these training sessions. We also had these consultants outside that, I mean, it wound up being a fairly large calorie burn internally for us um, for not a great return, at least on Giving Tuesday. Again, the assets that we've gotten out of this in terms of like our messaging and the, the, the time to actually stop and think through some of those things is really lovely. It also corresponded with, you know, a lot of grant reporting and renewal and stuff like that that would otherwise have loved to have that extra time. Um, so it made it a little challenging to try to budget for all of those things on our, you know, limited team. Um, but, you know, I, there's, I, I, I don't know that we will approach it with the same strategy in future, but we definitely covered all of the different avenues. I mean, our communications team was using social media to get the word out. Um, and we also sent out emails to our, our, our mailing list. So we did do a full court press with all of the boxes checked in terms of strategies, I think, and we still sort of came up um, a little disappointed on the experience. We did also do more targeted outreach to our volunteer community, which is quite large. We have about 500 volunteers that do commit to give to the organization. So a lot of our email outreach was tailored for them and getting them to make that pledge. And, and we did see that those were yeah. the donors who did come through who were not on our um, leadership team. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for sharing kind of the comprehensive strategy. And, and it does seem as though you guys checked all the boxes and pushed forward. So it'll be interesting to see how that evolves for future campaigns or even next year. Um, the last individual that uh, organization I was going to share is Datakind. Um, so Quentin, can you, you yeah. should be able to present now. I'm here, Noah. How are you? I'm well. Um, and Mackenzie, if you don't mind, uh, stop sharing your screen. That would be helpful. Great. And um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity to share. Um, heard a lot from the rest of the gang, a lot of the experiences that we had. Um, but just, um, you know, as an overview, Datakind makes the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning available to our social sector partners. Um, so like others, we are disintermediated from the actual sort of humanitarian impact, which makes storytelling a bit of a challenge. That was one thing we faced. We knew that well before going into this, it's been an ongoing challenge. 
Um, but the good news is that we made our COSVOX goal and then um, actually exceeded the overall goal by about 50% um, as we saw previous donors um, responding to the messaging that we were putting out there, which was um, primarily uh, email and social. Um, something interesting we found is that though we embedded the COSVOX link into that communication, those that had given previously, um, many of them would, did not pursue the re-registration through COSVOX, but jumped over to the old PayPal and made donations there. Um, so, and we, we know that is, you know, totally attributable to the messaging that we were putting out for Good Giving Tuesday. Um, and it was at much higher rates than they typically give as well. So we're really excited about seeing that. Um, I'm not sure Cosvox is thrilled by that, but, but we got the money, so yay. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's all good, that's the point. So. It's all good. And I think too, that's a good lesson on like your audience preference, right? And I think that's always something that nonprofits have to learn is like, what's the preference of the audience? How do they want to give and support our cause? So. Yep. Yep. A um, whole bunch of new donors um, that we're going to go on cultivating from here on in. So yay, another win. Um, our primary goal going into this was learning, however, and we well exceeded our goals in that. Um, learned a lot about uh, uh, timing, open rates, unsubscribe rates, bounce rates, spam filters, um, and on and on. So we got a lot of data to play with there, um, which is really great. We have a new communications team here at Datacon, so it really gave them a you know, early on experience uh, with the audience, um, which was tremendous, so that's great. Um, and then, you know, sort of shout out to you guys, Cosvox. Uh, the platform is easy and intuitive, um, so we'll be using it outside the Giving Tuesday timeframes as well, so psyched about that. Um, what went right uh, and what were we missing? Uh, GDPR. Um, big challenge for us um, and the storytelling challenges, which we know. Um, we've just got to keep at it and crack those. Um, in terms of key learnings, um, one, you know, it's really sort of internal that we've got to fix. Um, you know, we've got to put this into our 2019 OKRs. Um, just wasn't. So, you know, when this offer came in from you guys, it popped up out of nowhere, we reacted. Uh, we know that we've got to start now planning for that type of giving next year. <coughs> um, looked at some of the other folks that were speaking here. Um, the video is awesome. We need to be able to do that. Uh, we want to pre-populate with donors. We want to create, um, we have top social influencers, <coughs> excuse me, that we want to recruit way ahead of time and have them do some matching with us. Um, greater notification to our chapters and our board obviously and then i think we'll probably use paid social as well um would, would absolutely help so pretty a lot of the same things that you already heard but yeah i agree but it was a good experience thanks yeah and the one thing i will say and i appreciate you kind of sharing kind of the broad scope of learnings that you guys had but i think you you mentioned that challenge of being able to get over the storytelling thing but i just know from our time together working to with you all and kind of hearing that is I think there are kind of some steps forward that you guys did make and I'm excited to kind of see how that continues to play out and I think seeing how you like curved your message specifically to your audience is something that was a reminder again to me as we lead other nonprofits and even our customers on how again your audience and your context is so unique mm -hmm. and you really have to lean into that hard and see fundraising as the gap like bridging the gap between where your donors are and what they want to invest in and the yep. work that you're trying to get funded. Yep. And how do you build that bridge is going to depend on the context and the audience. And so um, that was really cool to see. And I loved your giving levels. For those that don't, um, I know if you didn't participate in the last one, they customized giving tier levels based on kind of data puns, which I thought was uh, very clever. So It's a very nerdy <laughs> audience. Yeah. yeah, it worked nicely. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much, Quentin, and I appreciate your team kind of sharing those insights. So thanks so much. You bet. Uh, so we're wrapped up on time. I appreciate everyone that kind of uh, came together today again to, to kind of share and just to learn together. We'll be sending this out uh, to everybody so that you could replay it back or even share it with your you know, others that maybe didn't join us today. Um, and as far as next steps from here, I know there's an additional uh, 
requirement from the Rockefeller Foundation as far as submitting kind of a debrief similar to what we talked through today. Um, so you'll want to do that uh, to, um, to the team over at the Rockefeller Foundation. We're really grateful for everyone's participation. Um, and we've learned so much through this process as well. Thank you to the Rockefeller um, Foundation and just their partnership on this effort. Uh, and we're excited to kind of retool and revisit how we can even make this better next year um, for organizations. Um, it looks like Sarah from the Rockefeller Foundation wanted to mention something. So Sarah, uh, you're unmuted, so go ahead. Great, thanks. And thanks Noah and thanks everyone for sharing your stories and the lessons you've learned. Um, I've been listening the entire time and it's really exciting to see all that you guys have accomplished. Just wanted to send a quick reminder on behalf of the Rockefeller Foundation to turn in the rest of your materials to Jeremy as soon as you can, if you have not already. And we'll also be sending around a short survey and feedback form from to all of you guys shortly. But yep, that's it. Congrats to all of you guys again and we'll be in touch. Excellent. Thanks so much, Sarah and Jeremy, who helped orchestrate this. Um, Rob, our CEO here, also helped put this together. Um, and grateful for you guys. So also now one wrap-up email. Um, and if you guys have any other questions on how Cosvox can be a part of your fundraising in the future, feel free to reach out to me directly, and uh, we'd love to chat. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, hopefully you guys have a great end of year.